Hey, what's going on YouTube? Today I want to go over some updates that I implemented into the AI voice cloning repository and that is adding RVC into the Tortoise AI voice cloning repository. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into it. I spent uh, quite a bit of time yesterday trying to get it going and I wasted a lot of time um, because of uh, a couple of things I'll talk about later but I'm going to show what I actually mean by that. And so here's the AI voice cloning repository, the one that I go over and how to install in this video that's going to pop up on this screen real quick. And um, all I added was this run the output through RVC checkbox. So if I um, turn off show experimental settings, this is how the screen looks. And then if I go and click on show experimental settings, um, this experimental settings will pop up. And then so will this run the output through RVC. And so once I do this, um, there are some voices that are that will populate inside of here based on a folder that you put files in. And the same with the index files. And then you can change all of these values as you would in RVC. So let's go ahead and give it a go. Um, I'm going to make sure I've got my Mel voice in here. Cool. I'm going to turn off Hi-Fi GAN and then um, well, I'm going to go ahead and reload the TTS. All right, so I've got all the parameters set up um, and I'm going to go ahead and click on generate. So what it's going to do is it's going to process the audio with Tortoise first and then it's going to run it through RVC. So um, actually, I want to run it. I'm going to do a before and after. So I'm going to rerun that without RVC first and then I'll run it again with RVC. So here's without RVC. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you find it informative. And then I'm going to run it through RVC now. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you find it informative. So hopefully you can hear the stark difference in uh, quality with that. Um, and so what I usually equate RVC to is kind of like an audio upscaler. As long as you're using a voice model of the same voice that you trained inside of Tortoise TTS, the outputted audio um, is quite a bit louder and I would say a little bit more accurate to the tone and pitch. So um, that's why I, I kind of relate it to an audio upscaler. So, so I'm going to go over in today's video the changes that I made and it's going to be code heavy. So if you just wanted to watch the demonstration, that's going to be the end of it. But I'm going to talk about what I did and um, all of that. An installation or an updated installation video will probably be coming out on it a little bit later but I kind of just want to talk about some changes that I did while it's fresh off the top of my head. And so with that, I'm going to jump into the code base here and talk a little bit of um, about some things that I did and implemented. So um, in all of my repositories, I always have a change log. So inside of the change log, I try to describe um, precisely what I did and all of the ad additional things. So in here were just some um, notes on how I installed RVC. So I actually ended up using my RVC to TTS pipeline. Um, but what I ended up having to do was do um, some modifications to that code because the way that I wanted to install it, um, well, I needed to look into a different folder to find RVC. And so um, right now the manual installation of it is kind of borked because what I ended up doing was going into the lib right here and then going all the way into that um, that pipeline that you install which I named RVC pipe um, and I ended up having to change the uh, location on where it's looking inside of modules RVC and so that is one issue because the ins when you install it, it's going to just say RVC instead of whatever path that I have inside of the AI voice cloning repository. Now that can be resolved if I make RVC into an installable package, which I might consider doing um, because it would make this able to be uh, manually installed. Um, at the current moment, you cannot manually, you cannot do this installation from a setup file um, without the setup file getting crazy because you need to do a couple of modifications and all of that. So that's one thing that I changed. Um, and then inside of RVC itself, I did a bunch of um, import changes as well, just to be accurate with it. So the main thing is that I put it inside of this modules folder just to make it look less messy. And so that is going to require some rethinking on my part on how to install the, the packages. 
Now, other than that, the other parts that I modified, um, the only things that really need modifying inside of the AI voice cloning repository are the um, contents inside of the web UI, which is the Gradio interface, and then the utils.py, which contains a lot of the utility functions for um, the clicks and then the events inside of the web UI. But the biggest thing that I had to add was a couple of columns inside of Gradio. So I ended up adding a new array um, inside of here called RVC settings. And so um, what RVC settings does, it holds all, the, all of the RVC settings so that it can so that I can store them inside of their own JSON file. So I guess I'll, I guess I'll go over the issue that I was running into yesterday. So all I wanted to do was um, take these RVC settings and what these RVC settings equate to is if we go into the Gradio interface here, there are all of these um, options in this column. So all of these columns here are coded up with these lines of code inside of the web UI Python file. And the issue I was running into was I simply just want to save the values that are in here when I edit them inside of the Gradio interface. And so if I open up the configuration file for RVC, here it is right here. I'll drag it on over to the right side and um, I'll show you what I mean by that. So if I open them up side by side, um, take a look at the left side here. Um, I'm going to drag index rate to one. And if you take a look at the right side here, index rate has changed to one. Now let me drag it back. So it's back at zero. Now the issue I was running into was um, I was using this function down here, this event handler to um, determine when to update the uh, JSON file. And what I was using initially was based on the the change in RVC settings. So if any of those settings changed, then I would update the RVC settings. However, what seemed to be happening was that the um, amount of times that it could make a post request or tell the code to update the settings here, it was lagging behind if you try to move the slider too fast. So I'm going to go ahead and uncomment this, comment this out and show you what I mean by that. All right, so we've got the old code version running for the updating. And this is the part that took me like three plus hours to, to figure out and just was wasting so much time. And I'll go over what I what ended up making, allowing me to just fix it. And it's super stupid, but um, here's what's happening. If I drag index rate at a fast speed, it's going to lag behind um, here. So as you can see, it updated at 099, but on the interface right here, it's actually 37. As well, if I try to do something like 0.5, it's just going to store zero for index rate instead. And so the way that I was able to determine that it was because I'm updating things too fast on the interface is if I did it really slow, 0.5, now it says 0.5 in the index rate up here. So this obviously wasn't working because it was lagging behind and it would use the wrong values if I tried to um, use this way of updating the settings because the way that I pull RVC, I use these settings um, from the JSON file. And so uh, I was trying to work this through with freaking chat GPT yesterday, as I do, it helps me a lot in my coding, but this, in this particular case, it actually just made my coding much slower and much longer. Um, but what I ended up finding out was if you go to the Gradio documentation and you go to slider, you know, I should have done this in the beginning. They always say RTFM, read the fun manual. Um, and if you slide down to the event handler or event listener area, um, you have this new button called um, release. So you have this new function uh, release. And so what this allows it to do is only make a HTTPS request once your slider has been released from the mouse. And so that prevents it from updating on every little minute decimal change and that just al allows it to update appropriately. So that is all I had to do was just add an if else block here. And that resolved the issue that took me three and a half hours to solve or longer because 
man, I was trying to figure out what the heck it was. Some ideas were like debouncing or adding a wait time or adding a function that is going to add a wait time and check for the last time it was called when Gradio itself has it built in. So um, note to self, note to you guys, RTFM, read the fun manual or else you will be wasting a lot of time. Um, and I knew that, but you know, I just didn't do it. So beyond that, the other thing that I ended up implementing um, was the RBC Tortoise pipeline. So I'll show you where I added it inside of the code here. So the way Tortoise works is when you click the generate button, what it ends up doing is it makes a series of function calls to get to this generate tortoise function here. And all this function is doing is calling the tortoise TTS engine and uh, running it with the parameters. So inside of here, uh, there's are, there are a bunch of uh, different lines of code that are just grabbing the parameters and setting up the parameters and setting up um, doing all of those um, different configurations for the audio file. And then if you go a little bit down, you have this area right here where it actually does all of the tortoise TTS generation. And this is where I added hi fi again a little bit earlier. And so um, this is just another function called to a TTS function that's inside of uh, or a TTS module that's inside of tortoise TTS. And below that, since I know that the audio file is finished after those four lines of code. All of this stuff is just gathering information from it. Um, I just now need to put in RVC to take out that audio or to convert that audio file with RVC. And so that's this RVC block of code here. So um, because I knew what I wanted to do, which was convert audio from Tortoise uh, with RVC, I knew where I wanted to add it into the, into the code. So. Um, if you understand kind of the process or the series of uh, steps that you need to do to accomplish your goal, it'll help things out a little bit. And so what I ended up doing here was using the RVC pipeline to accomplish that goal. And if we take a look at this, um, this is these are all of the values that we set up inside of the Gradio interface. Just using the um, values that are stored inside of this RVC JSON. So what I do in here is I load in the RVC settings um, using this function from that JSON file. This is now a dictionary that I can grab the values from the keys from. And so these are the keys and this whole thing is going to be the value. And I set all of those up with RVC convert. So long story short, all of the Gradio values you put into here um, or ran through RVC convert and what you get is an output path and then what I end up doing is writing the contents of the output path by reading the bytes and just writing over the um, outputted tortoise TTS file so it originally takes that tortoise TTS file in as a path here converts it and then since we don't need it anymore we just rewrite over it um, using this right here and so that is the bulk majority of the RVC logic. Um, actually, that is all the RVC logic for converting the, the voice. And then the only other things in here are a um, couple of argu arguments that um, needed to be stored. So if we go to args.rvc, uh, use RVC, we actually have a use RVC um, argument here for the uh, executive functions. Yeah, I don't need this anymore because I actually turned it into an RVC settings. I, I stored this value inside of RVC settings, uh, but this is where settings are. Actually, I'll just uncomment that so I don't get any issues. They're inside, it's stored inside of this exec JSON. So um, here we have use RVC and the Gradio interface uses this uh, value to determine whether or not to um, show you RVC parameters or options to change. For the most part, that is a summarization of the changes that I did on this repository. I did a live stream yesterday and um, I mean, this would be a summary of that live stream from yesterday on the changes that I did exactly. Um, but in retrospect, as I always look back on, uh, the changes on here weren't that much. I didn't do too many changes, but it's always easier to imagine what uh, I should have done in, in retrospect rather than at the time because, you know, I know the solution now. 
but that is going to be it for today's little video um an installation video for it or an updated installation video for the ai voice cloning repository will probably be coming out so that you can use rvc voices with it sometime in the near future probably let's say like next week because i've got some other things i want to work on but uh this was kind of just a spontaneous uh little update that i wanted to do because i wanted i i needed it for um just my sake of convenience and decided that i would just go ahead and full send it and update the ai voice cloning repository for this hopefully you guys found that interesting sorry there's a lot of code in this one but uh i warned you guys earlier in the video with that Thank you so much for watching the whole video. Um, thank you to my members of the channel for supporting me. I know I got some new members over the past week and I really much appreciate it, guys. So, yeah, hope to see you guys in the future videos and uh, I will see you all later.